Um, Dr. Harry Karasidis, it's nice to have you here in Munich and that you teach in our class and uh, so um, we are very happy about this and thank you for uh, spending some time for an interview and I would like to ask you about your clinical and um, professional background. Where do you come from and uh, how did you enter the field of neurofeedback? I come from uh, Washington DC area in uh, Maryland, in the state of Maryland, and uh, I've uh, done all my training in the Washington DC area. Um, I'm a, a physician, uh, I did my medical school training at Georgetown University, then did uh, a neurology residency after training in medical school, and then a clinical neurophysiology fellowship after that. And that's where my interest in uh, clinical EEG uh, first developed. Uh, at the time, I was doing research in both uh, EEG mapping, uh, the mapping of the electrical activity of the brain in, in two-dimensional and three-dimensional space, and also cognitive um, relationships between uh, brain behavior and the uh, EEG and the reactivity of the brain uh, to cognitive uh, tasks. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now you are... You can, you can actually say that I'm a cognitive neurologist. Uh -huh. I can expand on that if you like, mm -hmm. ask me what a, what a cognitive neurologist okay. does. Oh, this is a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kyrosides, what does a cognitive neurologist do, actually? So there's, uh, the field of neurology has to do with the function of the brain, the clinical dysfunction of the brain, uh, which can range from anything from the brain to the spinal cord to the nerves and the arms and the legs. Um, uh, the field of cognitive neurology or behavioral neurology has to do with the uh, dysfunction of the brain that results in changes of behavior or changes of memory and thinking. Mm -hmm. And why do you use EEG or QEG in your clinical practice? How, how important is that for you? So the, uh, the, 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 the philosophy behind the whole uh, uh, QEEG application uh, has to do with uh, the, the philosophy that the, the brain is the seat of the behavior. So uh, if there is dysfunction in certain anatomical regions of the brain, uh, this will result in certain dysfunction in behavior, or emotion, or cognition, memory, thinking. Do you have an explanation? Uh, sorry, do you have an, uh, a, an example for that, but on, but where you can make it a little bit more uh, easier to, to maybe understand? Because EEG, you see EEG and the behavior. What do you see with the connection? Yes, so, so the, let's give an example of attention deficit disorder mm -hmm. where you have a, a deregulation of executive functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, executive functioning is primarily seen uh, in the frontal lobes. Mm -hmm. And so on, a, on a, an EEG analysis, what we would be looking for is deregulation of the electrical physiology of the brain in the frontal lobe regions. How would this show up in the EEG? Well, the, the, uh, the uh, frontal lobes generate a variety of different frequency bands of brainwave activity mm -hmm. and typically the faster brainwave patterns are the more efficient ones and the slower brainwave patterns are the more dysfunctional, sleepy, inefficient patterns. Mm -hmm. and so we'd be looking for slower patterns in the frontal lobes. Mm -hmm. And so when you see those slower patterns in the frontal lobes, you always see that there is a dysfunction in the, in, in the behavior or in, in the and the performance also? Sure, so you would see inattentiveness, you would see problems with planning, organizing, uh, staying focused. Uh, in addition to that, you may see a deregulation of emotional self-control uh, or emotional outflow as, as reflections of dysfunction of the frontal lobes, yes. Now, as a neurologist, you are used to see the brain waves, look at the brain waves, and then uh, make your diagnosis. Um, you said you were using QEEG. What is the difference between the EEG and the QEEG? Traditionally, EEG in neurology has been the visual inspection. Uh, raw EEG waveforms are inspected by eyeball inspection. Uh -huh. uh, it used to be printed out on paper and you'd get a piece of, uh, a stack of paper this thick mm -hmm. and you'd flip the pages and eyeball it and say, mm, that looks normal or this doesn't look normal. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, with the application of computerized analysis and quantitative analysis of the EEG, you can actually not only image the electrical activity of the brain and locate the sources in three-dimensional space, but you can also compare uh, a given individual's EEG to a normative database and statistically compare whether they're normal or not. Mm -hmm. And where is the advantage for a clinician to look at EEGs with the quanti quantitative option for it? I think that uh, the, the advantage is that you're looking to correlate uh, anatomic dysfunction in the brain uh, to the behavior in a greater understanding of what's going on with the patient. Uh, for instance, um, a, a person, let's go back to the ADD example, a person may present with attention deficit problems and if you go just by the clinical presentation you might say, well, I'll give them a certain medicine to treat ADD. But if you look at the QEEG and the QEEG shows unexpected deviations mm -hmm. elsewhere in the brain that can also account for easy distractibility or a lack of focus, then uh, you may change your treatment strategy based on the results of the QEEG. Uh -huh. Thank you. As a skilled clinician and neurologist, uh, why is it not enough just to look at the traces, EEG traces? What, 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 what is the, the, the need for to look at QEG? Why is that so? Well, because the eyeball is not enough to be able to detect the differences. These are subtle differences in the EEG that require computerized statistical analysis and comparison to a normative database in order to bring out the abnormalities that are, are, that are present in the EEG. Do you have a, an example, again, <laughs> for where you see clearly the advantage of a QEG compared to an eyeballing, looking at the traces? Yes, predominantly this would be in uh, differences in uh, coherence, for instance. Coherence is the similarity of two different points on the brain as to uh, a reflection of how well connected they are. And there's just no way that you can eyeball that connectivity and coherence. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this interview and uh, enjoy your time in Munich. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you.